So there we go. So why don't we take a look at the game before we kind of talk about all the minutiae and all that crap that comes along with the frost, frost being fired. Um, Nebraska surrendered 642 yards to the Georgia Southern team. Uh, and until last night, Nebraska was 214 and 0 when scoring over 35 points in Memorial Stadium in their history. First time in Nebraska's history that they scored over 35 points and lost. <laughs> is there, other than the sellout streak, is there any shit left that we can screw up? <laughs> <laughs> Any streak left that we can get rid of? I mean, somebody's got to have another stat out there that we can figure out how to screw up sometime in the next few weeks or a few years, whatever the case may be. Because a lot of those streaks started dropping, oh, 2002? Yeah. You know, back yeah. after after Osborne was gone, we started losing some of those streaks. Um, Georgia State had 35 first downs. Nebraska had 33. Uh, Georgia State was 9 of 13 on third down. Nebraska, coincidentally, was 9 of 13 on third down, too. So pretty decent efficiency. They were 2 for 2 on fourth down, whereas Nebraska mm -hmm. didn't go for it on fourth down at all when they should have with fourth and a foot early in that third quarter, if I remember correctly. And we didn't. Because they hadn't stopped us. They hadn't stopped us. We punted, what, twice? So they really didn't stop us last night. Uh so 256 yard, 257 yards rushing for the Huskers, 5.5 yards per rush, which outpaced Georgia Southern, who only ran it, only ran it for 233, but they averaged 7.8 yards per rush. So, you know, is what it is. Uh, they threw, as I said a minute ago, they threw the ball 56 times, completing it 37 for 409 yards. And uh, Nebraska threw it 34 times, uh, 23 completions, 318 yards, 20, 28 minutes of time of possession for Georgia Southern versus just about 32 for Nebraska. So it was, it was rough. Um, it was rough. And, um, you know, we had, we did what we did and we didn't do what we needed to do. Bottom line. So, Thank God your mom came down and told me that my camera had shut off because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to interrupt your flow. <laughs> we we got to. We you just got to love organic podcasts like this one because. Uh, Who, anyway, as I said earlier, my impression of especially Casey Thompson, he was absolutely money all game long. Always had to fight from behind and you and use re wide receivers were tenacious. Grant needs to be given the ball at least 20 times a game and Allen at least 10. And who knows, maybe down the road, those two will flip flop. But uh, I was impressed with both of them. Um, anyway, that's kind of my wrap up for the game itself. Uh, any of those and I don't have a game breaker of the game because even though you could say it could be Casey, it could be Marcus Washington, it could be um, Anthony Grant, it could be any one of those three guys. I didn't pick between the three because the important story here is not really the game. It's about what we're going to talk about a little bit, which is Frost being gone. Um, and I really, there were no game wreckers for the defense other than Marquise Buford catching, getting two INTs. Uh, that's it. Other than that, there really wasn't too many guys that were making a big difference on defense. So that's really, and I, don't give six craps from Sunday about our over-under at all. I don't care. I don't care. We got no sacks. Wasn't that our over-under was sacks. So we got yeah. none um, or no three rushing no. TDs by running backs. So and we did, we did do that uh, between the quarterback. Hell, the quarterback got three by himself. Yeah. So um, we both picked the over, I think, or did we pick the number? Cause uh... <laughs> Because <laughs> Grant and uh, Allen both had one, if I remember correctly. Casey had three, and we had remember. one touchdown pass. So we we picked the number. We still lost, so we're both at minus one. And coincidentally, we're minus one coach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that just popped into my head, and I had to say it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. Are we pretty much done? Do you have anything else you want to say about the game itself, or should we just go ahead and move on? to um, talk about Frost and what we think the future holds for Nebraska's coaching staff? Um, well, I just wanted to just touch one more thing on the 
Well, I want to say one more thing. I just wanted to add on to the running backs. Yeah, I am really excited to see what Anthony Grant and A.J. Allen can do in tandem with each other. Looking mm-hmm. forward to the rest of the season because I, I really think that they are going to be our bread and butter, our go-to type of game plan in order to stay in some of these games so long as we don't get strung out too early on in, in any game. Um, right. Yeah, I'm – I'm still going to like, I'm still going to reserve my overall interpretation of Anthony Grant once he starts competing against better competition. Um, but it looks good. It looks good in our running back room. Um, and I just fingers crossed that it comes to fruition when we start playing these bigger opponents with better lines and better secondaries and linebackers and all Mm -hmm. that. Um, but I mean, his shiftiness, you can't, you can't deny the eye test of his shiftiness and his elusiveness and same thing with uh aj allen like i mean mm-hmm. dude had basically 10 yards average every time he touched the ball so uh um, yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah i mean shoot i'll take a essentially if i can do some quick math here 210 yards rushing a game between two running backs i'll take that um even if it only translates into 175 yards rushing per game when we get to these bigger name opponents, um, I'll take that. So yep. Um, yep. that's all. That's the last thing I had to say. We, I pretty much covered my views on our defense and uh, overall impressions mm-hmm. of our offense right at the beginning. So I'll just leave it yeah. at that. Let's move on to the next, uh, the next portion here.